Okay, I'm working on an iron cross casting today. Here is the pattern that I'm working from. And I copied that onto a piece of paper. And the middle part here is going to be raised. So I'm going to have to route out on the uh, foam around that. So what I did is I cut that piece out of my pattern and I glued it onto the foam. And I'm going to route out around here and make it flat the whole way around here where the rest of the part is going to be so that that will be raised. Um, so I will go ahead and turn my router on and show you how that works. Okay, so there it is all routed out around there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper that I cut that out of and I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to glue it down to the base there. Okay, now that I have it glued onto the foam, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut out the areas that need to be recessed with an exacto knife. Okay, here the pieces are cut out, completely cut out, and now I need to mount them on my sprue, and I'm using a sprue that's thicker than the thickest part of the casting, but I don't want to have to cut out all that metal, so I'm making it narrow here. I'm beveling this, and then the casting will be fed through just that narrow piece, so I don't have to cut out as much on the casting. Uh, when it's complete because I don't like cutting through all that so I'm going to glue it onto there one on each side and uh, then I'll put a pouring cup on the top of it then we'll be ready to, to uh, I'm going to put some drywall mud around it to hold the details and then we'll be ready to cast it Okay, I think I'm going to put some feeds across here too to make sure that it, everything feeds. So let me go ahead and get those cut out and glued in also. Okay, I forgot to mention that I put masking tape around my sprue also. I don't know, I just think it helps keep the sand out. Uh, so I put little extensions across there to help feed it. And uh, then I mixed up some 20 minute setting drywall compound and mixed it pretty well. And I made it, it's a little thinner than you would 
have it if you're using it for doing drywall. And then I like to start by the cavities and push it in to the, the cavities as well as I can. And then give it a good coating over everything. Okay. And then I'm going to hang it up to dry. Okay, I decided that I'm going to put some vents in the, um, in the sheetrock mud to allow the gases to escape. Hopefully it'll feel better that way. So I'm just going to use a little... Uh, Actually, I think there's a screwdriver bit, but anything I had handy to put some vents in here. Okay, next I'm going to put a sprue cup on it. I'm going to glue that on. I got this custom sprue cup at a local restaurant and it only cost me 99 cents. So I think that's a bargain. Plus I got a lot of sugar with it too. Okay, next thing we have to do is put this in the sand. Okay, I also put some masking tape across the top of my sprue cup to keep sand from getting in when I pour it into the, around the pattern. So I put about an inch of sand in the bottom of the bucket, put my pattern on top of that, and now I'm going to use my custom sand scoop that I got at another local restaurant. I think I paid more than a dollar for this one though. And we'll put some sand around the pattern. As you can see, this is dry sand. And I think I should have paid a little more for a better scoop. Oh well, I use what's at hand. Whatever works. Get her done, right? When there's some undercuts, you can go down and, and push the sand to try to make sure it gets fills in the undercuts. And you can also tap on the sides. Try to get the sand to fill better. I'll leave that masking tape on until right before I pour so then I can tear it off and go. Of course, if I get any sand in there, it's easy to blow out with it, a little air hose, too. Okay, ready to pour it, ready to mount some metal. Okay, it's been a few hours since I poured this, so we're going to pull it out and see what it looks like. It's still pretty hot, so I'm using a wrench. So far, so good. Looks like it came out pretty well. Let me get a wire brush and see if I can wire brush it up a little bit. Ok, 
Okay, here is the castings. Um, wire brushed a little bit. There's the one side. And there's the other one. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. I think if I'm going to do it again though, I would take the paper off because on some spots you can see where the paper floated just a little bit and it made a little bit of an edge where I think if I hadn't had the paper on there it would have been perfect. So next time take the paper off. It, what it did is it floated a little bit when I got the uh, wet sheetrock mud on it. Other than that, though, I think it turned out well. Uh, next thing to do is to cut the sprue off and uh, smooth them out a little bit and then sandblast them and paint the uh, areas that will be back black like the uh, areas here will be black and the uh, depressions here will be black and then we'll, we'll uh, buff off the areas that are going to be bright and silver again. Okay, here I'm ready to sandblast in my portable sandblast unit. I don't know how I'm going to hold my camera there. Okay, so there they are all sandblasted. Okay, the next step is to spray paint the recessed areas and the sides black. Okay, now I'm going to use a sander to buff off the high or highlight the uh, edges that need to be silver, the top of there, and just the edges here. So here's one of them that is all done, sanded off. Now I'm going to put some shellac on the black areas and it'll bring out the black colors again. It sort of dissolves, this shellac sort of dissolves the paint, so I've got to have to put another, um, I'm going to have to touch up the silver again. Just about. I can't now. Almost, I'm almost done. 